what we're going to be doing is something a little bit different. Normally when you do a portrait of someone, you are taking the proportions of the face, like five eyes wide and all that, and you're checking it against what your subject matter is to see if they are five eyes wide. And uh, so, and you do a lot of measurements. We're going to do it a little bit different this time. So I want to show you how to take another approach. Uh, maybe some of you are already doing this, but we're not going to do any measurements. What we're doing is we're going to start finishing the details. I'm going to start with an eye, and then I'm going to work across. I'm not going to measure the distance between eyes. How we're doing the measurements is when we finish the details on that eye, we're going to finish the detail around the eye, around the bridge of the nose, and that will give us the distance to the next eye, where the next eye starts. So we aren't going to jump around. We're not going to do one eye, then another eye, then do the uh, between the bridge of the nose. So the concept is, is that if you are doing the detail and we are finishing the detail, then we're going to continue out from there and that's how we're going to map the whole portrait. So uh, I want you to, I want to take you on this journey as doing a portrait. If you have trouble doing a likeness of someone in a picture, this is another approach. And uh, I've seen many people have more success with this approach than with the measuring approach. I have the camera mounted forward. That's why we get a little keystoning on the paper. The paper is the gray uh, paper for charcoal that's got a nice tooth for the charcoal. That's what it's made for. I, uh, for my tools, uh, I have a medium charcoal, I have a soft charcoal, and I've got a white charcoal. I have a kneaded eraser and, um, and a pencil for sharp, or a knife for sharpening my, uh, pencils. And, I have a photograph, and the photograph, I've got a straight edge on it. I'm going to be copying like this portion for an 8 by 10. This straight edge, I have to make sure I keep straight so it doesn't cock like this. And so uh, I get the angles right. So that, uh, and like I said, I'm going to start with an eye, and I'm going to start right here with that eye. So I'm not doing any layout lines ahead of time. And I'm just kind of picturing the space, and that's about the size I'm making the eye. And it normally works out pretty good if you kind of eyeball the space. That eye is pretty straight across. I've got to tilt it tilted up a little bit, so I'm going to correct that right now. This method here has the advantage of you're copying each individual feature. So I'm looking at the inside of the eye, I'm getting the shading around there, and all preconceived notions of how an eye looks you're not, uh, is not bothering you because what you're doing is just doing shades going around the eye. And we're not going to be jumping over to do the other eye because we don't know the spacing yet until we do all the details in between. So we're going to get the eyebrow coming around to the edge of the nose, coming down the nose a little bit, coming on the cheek a little bit under the eye. little bit of a shed. It's a highlight in this area. And there's a shadow coming down here. Coming around 
the side up to about here. Now I'm paying attention to the direction that that nose is going. It's on a little bit of an angle coming this way. So I'm going to take this highlight like that. Along the nose is pretty dark, darkening in. I'm not going to put in the white highlights until I have pretty much the picture. You know, put in the white highlight in that. I'm not going to put those in until I uh, have pretty well established the picture. So the gray is your middle tone and you're going darker and then you're going to go with uh, white and make it light. So you notice I haven't got any layout lines at all. And we're just taking it as it's coming, just concentrating just on this area right now. So how I'm getting my distance between is by just doing the details as I go across. Even though this is light, there is still some tone in there. That is eyebrows a little bit on this angle, so I'm going to start here, coming down, get start working on the eye socket. So now I'm going to take the other photograph to do the hairline. And his hairline is coming down a little bit in the center, so I'm going to find the center right here. And maybe move that up, his forehead is a little bit larger. Move it up to about here. And then we're going to come around like that. And it's coming down right around here.
before I get too far down here, I still have some more work here. and I don't want to be rubbing my hand up against it, so I want to go back and I want to work on his ear. He's got an ear that's sitting right here. I'm going to check the angle and as I look at that angle it's heading right towards here so we're going to come right out this way. So those are just double checks when you're looking at an angle and that and it just makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. Here is the 8x10 paper that we were doing our initial thing for size. So we can check to see how the size is. His head is kind of lining up about where it should be. The height of it we're going to trim a little bit because that edge is a little hairy up there. Uh, it just seems to be running pretty good. The top of her hair is going to be about here. Her head is going to be down a little bit lower. But that's where it's supposed to be. I wasn't low enough on this drawing here. So it's all working out pretty well. I've got plenty of room to put in the uh, arms that are uh, hugging each other down here. So now to lay down a little wider line, I took a knife and I sharpened so I have more uh, 
charcoal exposed. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be doing with the background. Probably have some white streaks behind it to kind of make the image pop a little bit. Let me move it down a little bit so you can kind of see what the bottom is starting to look like. And I'm just kind of filling in her hair and then I'm going to start it with the white. Now for going over it, uh, I made a bridge. The bridge is a piece of wood that's held up by two other wood, so it goes over the picture without touching the picture. There's a gap underneath. And it's something I can rest my hand on, and I can work that way. Now while we're doing that, I'm also going to take, this is now the soft charcoal, and I'm going to darken in that mustache. His mustache is quite dark, especially right on the bottom. Around those highlights in the eyes, more of those eyebrows. One of the things, especially her face, uh, very smooth skin, so you don't want to leave a, uh, a rough texture with the charcoal, which it will do on the gray. 
I don't like using a shading stump or using my finger, but I will blend with the other charcoal, the white charcoal, and then if it's too light, I'll go back over it with the uh, uh, black charcoal. That's how I get a smooth skin. I think the background, I'm going to just take the white and make it pop. So before I go any further, I should frame it. Uh, in other words, find out the limits. So I'll go back to my 8 by 10 that I had and I want to get a I don't want to crowd the top of his head I want kind of what I've got here so we're going to take it in like that so we're going to lose a little bit of her elbow maybe let me bring it down a little bit and see how that looks and then I'll just take a uh, take the charcoal and just do a uh, light line around. That's where it's going to be cut to. That's kind of, I kind of like that framing there. So we're going to be losing on the bottom you can't quite see the bottom that I'm seeing here, but you can see the white paper. That's where the cutoff point is going to be. 